let's get our R Studio space set up. Get a new R script file. Let's save that to whatever folder that has the portal time series that we've been working in here, I believe. Uh, back to demos. Uh, today, I'm going to call this Arima class. Save it. And then I'm going to set my working directory to the source file location. Now we should be ready to go. Uh, today, a lot of what we're going to be doing is in the uh, forecast library that I had you install uh, a couple of weeks ago. So go ahead and just load that up, run, and move this over because we're going to have a bunch of graphs and we're going to want to see that. So we're going to start by just redoing something that we did last week, which is to gener regenerate that white noise data set. So I'm going to set my seed to 20, just like I did last week. This will give us back a, a version of the, the random draw that will be consistent across all of us. So I'm going to store this information in uh, something called white noise. I'm going to go ahead and create a time series object. And what I'm going to feed that TS function is a random draws from a normal distribution, which is what our, the R norm function does for us. And I'm going to tell it I want 273 random draws from this normal distribution. And I want the normal distribution to have a mean of 0 0.18. Oops, one too many zeros. There we go. Let's run that. I see over in my environment window that it has generated the white noise and that it is indeed a time series object and there are values in there. So that's always good news. So now what I'm going to do is to plot it so we have, we can look at it in this window. All right. We've now imported our data. We've all now imported our data and turned NDVI and RAIN into time series objects. So let's now also add white noise into this mix. So we're going to regenerate our white noise data set that we played with last week by setting our seed. So we all have the same draws from that distribution. And then to uh, store those draws from the distribution, I'm going to create white noise. And I'm going to convert these draws into a time series object using the TS function. What I'm going to feed the TS function is random draws from a normal distribution, which is what this R norm uh, function is going to do. I'm going to tell it to pull those 273 observations again and that those 273 observations should be coming from a distribution with a mean of 0 0.18. Let's run this. So now what I'm going to do is use a function from the forecast package that will fit this white noise model that we wrote out in the previous segment to our white noise data. So I'm going to call this model I'm going to fit average model W for white noise. And I'm going to call from the forecast package the function mean f, and I'm going to give it our white noise data. And then let's plot this. And then on top of that, I'm going to plot the fitted relationship that comes from fitting that equation to our data. And call it blue. Run, and that's very unexciting. It's unexciting because there's a lot of movement in the data, but our model doesn't capture it. There is nothing in this equation that we're fitting to the data that varies with time because we've already made the assumption, which in our case is not an assumption, that these data points are drawn independently and randomly from a, uh, an underlying distribution and that the variance over time is simply being caused by random error. Let's take this model and now apply it to the NDVI data where we know we have correlations related to the data structure and see what this looks like. So we're now going to do average model, that forecast package, and the mean f function. And this time I'm going to give it NDVI.ts, uh, my NDVI time series object. I'm going to run that. And then let's go ahead and plot ITS run and then plot on top of that the fitted values from that model that were generated part of average model feeling blue today so let's go with blue again and so this model is just the same because once again remember that the equation that we are fitting is 
the mean plus some error. And so all we're going to get is a flat line with time because there is no time component. Let's see what happens now when we start to take this core equation and add some of these autocorrelation structures into the equation and fit that to our data. So what we're going to do now is go back to the whiteboard and refresh our memory on what an autoregressive and a moving average process looks like and talk about how to integrate that then into this model that we're building.